Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my WordPress shopping cart tutorial. In the previous tutorial, which I provided a link to above, I showed you how to build or put together the theme and install the shopping cart system, as well as how to style it and mess around with it. And we're using WP eCommerce, and in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to take you through the whole process of setting up your shopping cart. Now, here we're inside of WordPress, and I'm just going to take you to the dashboard right now. And this is after WP eCommerce has been installed. And this is just a dummy site right now and otherwise there would be sales and orders and all kinds of financial information all provided for you here right on the dashboard. Then for the store part, if you want to access that, go under settings and just click on store on the left sidebar and you see all your different information here. Now when we're in the general tab, and I'm going to take you through all the tabs and tell you everything that's going on here, you basically are going to want to put in your base country. I'm in the United States, so I put that in there. Then you want to go into the target markets area. And right here, you would check off all the different countries that you would want to be able to buy from your site. Now, if you don't check them off, they're not going to be able to buy from you. Just understand that. But you also understand that you don't want to check every single one of them because that's going to make your customers have to go through this gigundo list right here just to find a country. So I just chose in this situation just to put United States inside of there. Then underneath of here, you're going to just decide how long you want to keep anything that a customer like let's say they go on your website and they click that they want to buy something and then they leave it in their cart and they don't purchase it here you're going to define how many days it's more than likely going to stay stored in the browser so that if they come back it will still be there in their cart here you see hierarchical product category what this is going to do is it's going to make really smart urls that are going to break all your pages down into all the different categories that you have your products inside of and that's often a good idea to use for search engines so more than likely, you're going to want to put yes inside of there. Down here under currency settings, you're going to define what type of currency you're using. And here I'm using US dollar. And then you define exactly how you want your dollar amounts to be used or displayed on your screen. And then, of course, after you make all these changes, you want to hit update. So now let's move into the presentation tab. And we briefly touched on this before whenever we moved all the theme files over into our WordPress theme that we created. And if you look down here, you can see this is where we moved those template files after we selected them. And I just selected them all, whether I was using them or not. You can, of course, decide to choose less or use more or whatever you want to do with it. Okay, on here, you see exactly what it says. This will allow you to back up your WordPress theme prior to installing all of these other different pages and all the other additional information that's needed along with that. And then down here, there's a lot of questions in regards to what does it mean by flush theme cache? Well, if you move your theme files around manually using FTP software, you may have to flush your theme cache to update the location for all of your theme files once you update them using like FTP or what have you. Then we come back up inside of here. Over here, we see button type. Normally, you're going to want to have this be add to cart, which is going to slowly build up all the different products in the shopping cart. Hopefully, they'll buy more than one product that way. Otherwise, if you have PayPal set up, this is the only way this works. You can put buy now. And in this situation, the other way you'd really want to do this is if you have one product or a very small number of products for sale, meaning that more than likely somebody's only going to buy one product. In that situation, you would put buy now. And then if you are not selling any products inside of here, but maybe offering services and so forth, or just looking for general interest, you would hide the add to cart button. Also, this is also never going to be checked yes, so that's the way that goes. Then right here we see show product ratings. What that means is if somebody comes in here, and this is how everything's set up, and they click on your products page for your shopping cart, and you see different products that are all set up inside of here. You can see as we scroll down here, average customer ratings and your rating. This allows people to come in here and put different star ratings on products if you have that checked yes. So that's what that means. Show stock availability would show your inventory if you choose to do that. And of course, if you want to do that, you'd also want to set up inventory inside of this guy. Display fancy purchase notifications. What that means, so if somebody comes in here and goes add to cart, see this little thing right here? Well, that is a fancy notification. And we're just going to hit continue shopping. And you may have noticed that over here in the shopping cart on the right side of the screen, because I put the shopping cart widget over here, it automatically threw that inside of there. Then you can decide if you want to display per item shipping on the screen or choose not to display that and wait until the person checks out to show them how much you're going to charge for shipping. I have that set for yes. Here, disable link and title. What that means is if the person would go here to the products page and click on this, that's going to allow them to go to that specific 
products page, as you see right here. So that's all that means. A lot of this stuff sounds complicated, but it's really not. Then also add quantity fill to each product description. Well, of course, I think that if there's any situation in which a person might buy more than one of your products, you're definitely going to provide them the opportunity to buy more than one of your products. And we scroll down through here. And if you're just using the default free version of WP Commerce, which I am here, you don't really have the option to use these other fancy things for your product pages. So I'm just gonna go through the default view and then of course if you decide to buy it, you can go into the grid view settings which is only gonna be used if you purchase the gold cart which is a very reasonably priced if you wanna get it, definitely I would say get it. But I'm just gonna stick with the free version in this tutorial. And then of course show list of categories. This just provides all kinds of other different things in regards to how products are displayed. So if the person clicks on your product tab like I have up here, right here where it says products page, you can define exactly what products you wanna show. Do you wanna show all your products or you just wanna show products in certain categories? Again, this is something where I can't imagine somebody not choosing show all products. Then you can also define how those products are displayed, whether they're going to be based off of the last product you uploaded, drag and drop, price and name, drag and drop's not going to work unless you buy the gold cart. Show breadcrumbs, what that is, if you have that set for yes, these are breadcrumbs right here across the screen. If you can't see this, you can view it full screen. I, this is a high definition video. This just allows people to click backwards through all the different things based off of how you categorized all your products. And again, these are all kinds of other different options. I just have all of these set for yes, except I have the featured product thing here shut off or set to no because I have that fancy featured product slider that I showed you before. Then again, I have my shopping cart and where it's located. As you saw before, I have it in my widget section. So if we scroll here, there it is. There's my shopping cart. And I find that's also the best way to use this. And then also, do you want to display postage and tax? I just have no. I just present them with that information whenever they get to the shopping part and they're ready to check out. This situation, I always have all the product category settings always set to no because some of them don't work with the free version of this and I see really no reason to go into that. Then down into thumbnail settings, you can define what the default sizes for all of your thumbnails will be, both being the default product thumbnail size, group thumbnail, which isn't gonna work for you unless you have the gold cart, and single product image size, and that's the size of the product on the individual product pages. Then you have to define if you want to crop your thumbnails. I always choose no in this because sometimes it gets kind of sloppy with that, and I just have all my thumbnails be a default size, and I make sure I upload them properly. Here you define if you want to show your thumbnails, and then here you define if you want to use a light box effect. It doesn't really work with what I got here, but I could have it set up. I do have it set up for the light box. You can see it's showing a much larger version of my product on the screen, and there's a smaller version for the thumbnail. So if you have that on, that works. And I always use thick box. Use pagination. This allows the person to go through if that's set to yes to sort through all of your different products. See, this is pagination down here. It allows them to shoot through all the different pages that are available to them. So it's all pretty nice. And then this shows, do you want these pages to be at the top, the bottom, or both? And I have both chosen, and I think that's a default as well. And then intense debate is a way for people to leave comments. You can either have that yes or no. I choose to have it not. It's up to you. Then hit update again. And we come to the admin section. This mainly focuses in on whenever you provide products that a person could download, like eBooks or music or whatever. And this here, you define exactly how many times the person can download your product if they want to. And here you define if you want to lock down the downloads based off the IP address and it'll automatically figure out what IP address downloaded it and won't allow downloads to anything but that fixed IP address. In this situation, I can't imagine any situation where you do not want check MIME types set for yes because if it's not set, it exposes your site to potential problems. So I don't really understand why that's even there, but either way, always make sure that says yes. And then right here, what you're gonna define is what email addresses are going to be sent information whenever a new purchase is made. And you can have multiple, you can put a comma in there if you want, have a whole bunch of email addresses go in there. The reply address that is going to be in the email whenever a email is sent to you that says basically, hey, somebody ordered some stuff, this is where they live and this is where you need to send it and so on and so on. And here you would also type in your terms and conditions. This is going to pop up right before they make the purchase. So for example, if you have minimum orders or whatever, you will not accept a purchase unless it's $50 or more. You would of course put that information in there. And also maybe return policies or whatever. That all kind of goes to a lawyer. Down here, purchase receipt. This is going to be the message that the person receives after they make a purchase from you. Shop name is going to be the name that you make for your actual website. And it's also going to list out all the different products that they purchased, as well as shipping costs and the total price. Taxes also, if that's applicable. And then admin report. And this is the information that is sent to whoever you put up here 
as the recipient. And it's going to tell you basically, hey, this person ordered a whole bunch of things and you need to check in on that. And then down here in the track and trace settings, this is only applicable if you're using a shipping service that tracks packages. In most situations, I don't use this. Let's move on to taxes. And I'm basically going to say that everything on here is totally going to be based off of where you live and I'm gonna pretty much leave it at that. You can see down here in tax rates, I defined that if anybody in Pennsylvania buys anything off this website, that's where I live, that they are gonna be charged 7% in regards to taxes. And I can just as easily come in here and all of a sudden set that to zero or delete this altogether. And you can, of course, put different information in there depending upon what country you live in or what state you live in. It's all going to be different, so I'm not really going to go into it. And it's pretty much self-explanatory if you understand how the taxes work. The only thing that kind of trips people up here is the product-specific tax. I will go over that. Basically, what this is asking is if some of your products are taxed at a different amount based off of what types of products they are. So sometimes food is taxed at 0% tax rate. Sometimes it's the same as any other product. Sometimes clothing's discounted, da 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 da. So again, it's gonna depend off of where you live. Let's get into shipping. And here, of course, you can check on no if you're not gonna charge people shipping, but most definitely I do. And then we have here a base city, which really isn't that important, but we put it in there anyway. The zip code is very important though. You'd wanna put in whatever your zip code is or whatever type of postal code that is used if you're outside of the United States. And then there's a shipwire settings, which I don't use. You can also decide if you wanna enable free shipping. If you click on yes, it's gonna say, what's the minimum order before the person gets a free shipping? And if you click on yes, you can say like $100 and everything after that's free shipping or do whatever you want there. Then we have our different shipping modules. And I'm just gonna go through these real quick. Basically, that whenever you wanna edit these, you just come in here and check that off, hit edit over here. And basically what table rate means is it's gonna calculate shipping based on the price of the order. So if we come in here and say if the price is $50 and above, you're going to charge them $10 for shipping. Okay, so that's how that works. And then the other type of shipping is weight rate. Here we come into weight rate and if I click on that, it's going to allow me to say, okay, well, based off of if the weight is 50 pounds and above, I'm going to charge them a certain amount of rate. And then you hit update and you keep adding additional weights and also pay attention to and above. So you're going to want to make sure that you have all those set properly. And I'm just going to delete that again. And then of course you have flat rate. And this is just whenever you have a fixed shipping rate. And you would, of course, hit edit and change that. And then down here we see FedEx, UPS, Australia Post, and United States Postal Service. You click on any of these different things. What it's going to allow you to do is enter your user ID and any other information you have in regards to how you have shipping set up inside of your shopping cart system. They're all going to be different, but at the same time, very, very similar. And you can see here I use FedEx, and FedEx actually is an add-on product you have to pay for. I'm gonna jump over into payments. And this is very simple. Most of the time you're gonna use PayPal. That's what almost everybody uses. And if you would wanna set up PayPal, basically, you're gonna come in here again and you're gonna hit edit. This is so easy to do. And you're gonna put display name, which is gonna be the name, your name, or the name of your company. And then username is gonna be your PayPal email. So really, really simple. Your user ID with PayPal, and then the person's gonna be able to go through here and buy things directly through PayPal, which is really awesome. You're almost always gonna wanna ha be notified whenever a payment goes through, so click yes. And you're almost never gonna want any information in regards to shipping details or address override. I would never change address or override because then you're messing around with how PayPal works and nobody wants to mess around with that stuff. So that's cool. Then we get to check out, come down in here. I always have my users register before they can buy anything off the site. And the reason why that's important is you want to make sure that you capture all of the user information, which we're going to get into down here. So that you make sure everything gets shipped to the right location, you have all the right information if you want to get a hold of this person. And then I also don't force people to use secure socket layer because all my payments are going to go through PayPal and I would suggest that that's the way you do it as well. Then you don't have to worry about all these security issues and all these other different things. And I also have enable shipping same as billing option to know because I let PayPal handle all those different problems. Then we come down into form fields and since I have this checked to yes, that's going to require the person before they buy anything off to me to enter all of this information, which is real simple information, just first, last name, address, city, state, country, and postal code. And that's it. That's checkout. Then you get into marketing, and this is really cool stuff. Okay, so if you have display cross sales, what this is going to do is it's going to display similar items to the current products that they are looking at. So that's going to kind of help the potential customer along to actually buy a product or find the product that they ultimately want to purchase off you. 
So I see no reason for that not always to be checked. And of course, any opportunity to get people to share your information on social networks, why not? And it provides that option right here. And it also provides them the option to like your shopping cart system using Facebook. And here I almost never have this. How did you find us? This is a survey that pops up and kind of wastes people time. You can either have it checked or not. I almost always leave it unchecked. Down here you have RSS address. If the person chooses to sign up for your RSS feed, they'll be notified every single time you change any products on your website. So if they sign up for that, that's awesome. Then you have the Google Merchant Center, and this is really, really awesome. And it's pretty much self-explanatory. You would just click on Google Merchant Center. You have to set up an account with Google. And whenever you do that, they're going to ask you for this specific link. So you just copy that, go into Google Merchant Center, and paste that in there. And all of a sudden, why that's really cool is, let's say you sell valves. Like you see here on the screen, this is the Google product search. And if somebody goes to actually search for one of your products, you're going to be in here with the likes of Amazon and Sears and all these other different other people, big wig people that sell online. And this is going to really, really, really boost your sales. So there's nothing negative about that. It's totally, totally awesome. Definitely do it. And then we come down to the final part. We click on the import tab. And what this allows you to do is create a CSV file. It's going to have descriptions, additional descriptions, product names, price, SKU codes, which is like an ID code for all your products, weight, weight unit, stock quantity, and whether this product is a limited quantity or not. And if you throw all those into a CSV file, you'll be able to upload them and all of your products will automatically go directly into your shopping cart system. So really cool, absolutely amazing that all this stuff is free. And there's a link underneath of this video that links directly to the theme that I use, which is right here, real fancy dancy. And you can, of course, change any of your images and it's all free. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.